Howdy everyone, there's a first time for everything and today it's my first time to test out an anamorphic lens and I'm starting with a pretty affordable one here, the TT Artisan 25mm f2.0. It has a 1.33 times ratio, stretching your image vertically so that you can squidge it back down to keep better resolution for widescreen video work. This one is designed for mirrorless camera systems with an APS-C sized sensor. Here's the coverage you get if you shoot with it on full frame. On an APS-C camera, that 25mm focal length offers a moderately wide angle field of view, making it very useful for all kinds of different applications and the decently bright maximum aperture of T2.0 means you can get somewhat out of focus backgrounds and shoot in darker situations too. It's a fully manual lens, manual focus, manual aperture and no built-in image stabilisation and I'll put its price in the description below, it'll probably be cheap. I'll also list which mirrorless camera systems it'll be available for, although almost certainly all the usual suspects, Sony E, Fuji X, Micro Four Thirds and so on. I'd like to thank TT Artisan for sending me a copy of this lens for evaluation, although as usual this is a totally independent review. The lens's build quality is almost exactly what you'd expect for an inexpensive Chinese optic that's designed for video work. It's dead, dead simple, metallic and solidly built, not to mention small. The only thing that's different are the geared aperture and focus rings, and of course that beautiful and mysterious anamorphic front element with its deep blue coatings. The lens is not weather sealed. At the rear of the lens we find the aperture ring, which turns completely smoothly but the aperture stops are not spaced out evenly, which is a bit of a bugbear for me. The metal grooves on the focus ring look super distinctive and feel rough on your fingers, but obviously they're designed to be compatible with follow focus systems, and the focus ring does turn very smoothly with decent enough precision. When it comes to focus breathing, rather than zooming in and out when you change focus, the image horizontally stretches, which is actually a very cool effect. The lens does not come with a hood, but it does have a 67mm filter thread. Overall, as I mentioned, the build quality is absolutely dead simple here, with helpful features for video makers, who the lens is very obviously aimed at. Let's see about image quality now, I'll be testing this thing on a Sony A5100 camera with its 24MP APS-C sized sensor. No in-camera corrections are available with this lens. At T2.0, in the middle of the image, we get fairly good sharpness here and fairly good contrast too. Nothing explosively exciting, but it looks good. That quality continues across a lot of the image frame, but when we get to the edges, we see a sudden and almost total deterioration. Stop down to T2.8 for loads more brightness in the corners, but no more detail. Back in the middle though, the lens has become razor sharp. At T4, the centre is just as good, and the corners are slowly beginning to see just a little bit more clarity. At T5.6, the corners are definitely getting better, although the very edges are still very soft. T8, T11, and even T16 are seeing further improvements, leading us to excellent image quality, albeit with a little colour fringing on contrasting edges in those corners. I've got a feeling T16 is actually not quite as dark as that, otherwise we'd be seeing a bit more softness from the effects of diffraction. Still, there you go, the lens offers good image quality in the middle at all apertures, but you really do need to stop it down for sharp images in corners. The thing will quite happily produce acceptable 4K video footage for you, I think, but I wouldn't push it any harder than that. Let's move on now and look at distortion and vignetting. The lens suffers from pretty clear barrel distortion, however some video makers might actually like that because it's the look a lot of anamorphic wide angle lenses used on Hollywood films have given in the past. Vignetting at T2.0 is strong though, as we've already seen. Stop down to T2.8, T4, T5.6 and T8 for those corners to gradually brighten up. This lens cannot focus especially closely to your subject, only getting you down to about 50cm. At T2.0, close up image quality gets pretty ghostly, unfortunately, T2.8 is better and T4 is sharp again. Let's see now how the lens works against bright lights, always an interesting question on an anamorphic optic. 
and things are kind of exciting here. I love that big blue horizontal line stretching across the image, although of course it is technically a fold. There's some extra flaring at T2.2, stop down to T2.8 as I've done here, and that is reduced, but the blue line remains. Obviously, it's up to you whether that is desirable to your aesthetic or not. While we're working in the dark, let's take a look at coma levels. At T2.0, coma smearing in the corners of your footage will be strong. It's still there at T2.8, fades away at T4, and it's totally gone at T5.6. Let's zoom out now and look for sun stars. At T5.6, they're pretty broad and underdefined. As you stop down to T8 or T11, they get bigger, but still not very defined, really. And finally, bokeh. Once you correct the lens's 1.33 times stretch, you can see that the bokeh is a fairly normal circular shape here, albeit with some stretching in the edges with a cat's eye shape to it. Overall, well, it's tricky for me to either recommend or unrecommend this to a broad audience of photographers and video makers because it really is quite a specialist little object. On the one hand, technically, its image quality is not great, but on the other, the lens has tons of character and most filmmakers who are looking at something like this will probably have that as a much higher priority for them. It won't really be sharp enough for anything higher resolution than 4K video work, but it'll still be a lot of fun for a lot of video shooters. Thanks for watching everyone, I do hope you find these reviews interesting and helpful, I quite like making them, although obviously it takes a lot of time and expense for me to do so. If ever you've thought to yourself, boy, Chris just doesn't make enough content for me. Well, you are in luck, as down in the description below, you can find a link to my Patreon page, where supporters get all kinds of exclusive bits and bobs, and those who do will surely get a warm fuzzy feeling inside for helping out my channel. Ciao for now, everybody.